If you're building a finance tracking application on Bubble, there are three different development complications you must watch out for. In this video, we're walking through Mint, which is a personal budget and finance tracking application. It's actually a type of app that we see a lot of on Bubble. It's also one we see implemented inefficiently and ineffectively, which can create a lot of frustration during development and even after launch. If this is the type of app or functionality that you're building, keep watching so you can avoid these complications in your own development. It's Gabby at Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps to start or grow their businesses all without coding. Mint offers users a way to create budgets and track their personal transactions across multiple financial accounts. There are calculators, charts, notifications, alerts, and bill pay management. You'll certainly run into these features in similar tracking apps like You Need a Budget, the built-in tools from banking apps, and even more robust software like QuickBooks and Xero. Because this type of app involves features that can apply to other lifestyle management and tracking tools, we're going to tear it down to three of the most common issues we see coming out of developing an app like this. We're going to start with category management. Financial tracking applications help you stay organized. And if you've used any kind of project management, productivity, or lifestyle tracking tool, you know that categorization can make or break your experience. By categorizing finances into more manageable buckets, you can more easily visualize where your money is going and better define your budgets and goals. Categories might sound like a simple feature to implement in your bubble app, but there are some pitfalls that are easy to run into and create bottlenecks in your development. For example, not structuring your categories properly in your data architecture. In Bubble, you can do this either within data types and or option sets. Depending on the complexity of your categories and whether or not you want to allow users to create their own custom categories, some approaches are better than others. And it all depends on what makes the most sense for your app's use case. Also, your app may have an extensive category library, which is likely to involve a hierarchy of parent categories and subcategories. If you're not setting those up in a dynamic way in your database structure, you'll inevitably hit ceilings as you scale, causing you to rework features and just run into a lot of headaches down the road. If you're just getting started with your financial tracking application in Bubble, start with just a few categories for testing, enough to see a variety of options and filter a sample set of transaction data. Make sure the system you've implemented works well. Then, once you've locked your logic into a stable position, you can add in the rest of your list. This is especially helpful if you plan on having a big list. We're all about efficient development over here. By the way, if you're wanting to build an app like this, we help entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch in our own private client program. If you want to see whether you and your app would be a fit for that too, apply for a free strategy call over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash call. Next up is charts. It's hard to have a financial tracking application which is full of numbers without any sort of visualization of that data. In fact, users will expect you to have all kinds of charts and graphs to illustrate where their money is going to get the big picture at a glance. Whether it's a monthly breakdown of income versus expenses, a category breakdown further filtered by date, or even something as simple as a budget progress bar to easily see whether they're nearing their custom defined threshold. Your app needs to be incredibly simple to understand and use. With that said, not all charts are created equal. And while you don't need to be a data scientist, you still need to be strategic in how you implement charts. Which visualizations will tell the best story about the user's financial health? Will the user be able to manipulate the chart to zoom in or zoom out on a date range? How about filtering by accounts like credit cards, checking, savings, investment, retirement? And comparisons, can they see how this month compared to the last? Finally, chart elements in Bubble are likely going to be referencing your database or maybe even an external data source through an API call or a plugin. And if you haven't structured your data sources properly to efficiently power that element, you could end up with a workload heavy system or flat out a system that doesn't work at all. Financial tracking apps have the potential to be a part of a user's daily routine. It needs to work, it needs to be reliable, and most of all, it needs to help your users. They're coming to this app to maintain budgets, to make payments on time, to save up for something important in their life. Help them help themselves by making it easy to gather the insights they need with smart data structures and meaningful visualizations. Now let's talk about calculations. Financial tracking applications involve a lot of numbers. And typically these are apps that are gonna do a ton of math for their users so that they don't have to. From summarizing monthly spends, to calculating a percent change of an account balance, 
to alerting users when a budget threshold has been met. There's a lot of automation happening with numbers and you need to have a strong command over this kind of logic. Now, this is an area where if you don't know what you don't know, it's easy to create formulas that either don't work well or don't work at all. Here are the pitfalls we see when it comes to working with calculations. Inefficient aggregations of a list of values. For example, getting the total spend of a user's travel expenses broken down by month. So every time they pay for something that's travel related, that's one transaction. So gathering all of those up, summing them up, breaking it down by date so that they can see what their trends are. There are several things happening here, right? We're filtering by date, we're filtering by category, by user, of course, and, and adding it all up. What if you want to compare it to the previous month or take a bigger date range and compare it to the previous uh, period of time that came before it? Depending on your data structure, even your front-end design, and plugins, there are many ways that that kind of formula can be structured improperly and only a few ways that will really keep things optimized for scale. Aside from that, it's easy to want to save every single calculated value in your app's database. Be careful with this. Every change you make to your app's database will cost you some workload units. Remember that you can do real-time calculations and store results in custom states. You can also refer to previous workflow actions to access those values to stay efficient as well. Of course, every app will present different scenarios, but keep an eye on your workload consumption and look for opportunities to reduce the number of times that you're modifying the data records or doing full database search queries, and instead try to replace those with custom states and more efficient list management. Becoming proficient in logic, especially when a variety of math formulas are involved, can take some time. As a tip, just get your feature to work first, right? If it's not working, you don't have a starting point for optimizing it. Once it's working, measure its workload consumption. You can do this in the app metrics tab of your app editor. You might need to alter your database structure a bit, write the dynamic expressions in a different way, or pass data around on the page in a different way. Do this in layers, just step-by-step, step. build, measure, learn, and you'll see a stable experience coming together for your user. All right, from here, you should have a good idea of how to better navigate your development. Of course, there's more to financial tracking apps and categories, charts, and calculations. You also need to think about data security, notifications, your overall UI, and more. If you're ready to move into deeper components like these, schedule a strategy call to sit down and chat with us. We'll help you put together a custom roadmap for your app's development. Then we'll see whether you and your app might be a fit to join our private client program, where we help entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch. To talk more, head to coachingnocodeapps.com call. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.